Mile of Fish. I'm going to show you what I did on the build. All the pictures that I've already cycled through were so when you're building it, you can get to it right at the front of the video. It's kind of what I want this video to be. I'm going to give you what most people are going to want right up front. So, in other words, I'm going to get right to the tail, which is doing double backflips, etc. Okay, first off, I'm going to, I gave you the CG sheet. I just want to explain real quick. Let me get this out. This is just going to be a tape. I'm just doing this. It's going to be some mistakes. Feel a little unprofessional. Sorry about that, but I just wanted to do this. Center gravity is up here. So, and, and these measurements are from, let me show you here. I gotta watch the camera here. Hooking the tape on your trailing edge at the fuselage width, even I have it figured for, and up to the center gravities that I give you here. So that's where the center gravities are. Recommend you start at six and a half. So six and a half forward over here is where is about 25%. Start working your way back. I'm back to about 34% or maybe even 35 way back there and trying to make this thing do double backflips. Okay, speaking of double backflips, let's get to the elevator. A little bit of setup time here. <clears throat> Sorry about the camera swing, guys. All right, well, actually, I didn't need to do that just yet. See, I'm going to make some mistakes. That's okay. Switch on. Switch on. This is what you guys all want to see. I'm sorry guys. There's what it takes right there. That's what you get that you'll be doing double backflips when you get your CG back to it within. And that will do it without adding flaps. I've got my flaps. <laughs> I've actually got my flaps hooked up to my throttle stick where I can adjust them. But uh, this will this will do it even without the flaps. That's what it takes. Let me slide this back a little bit or the tail's going to hit when I hit the down. Now I can't do double front flips. I can do single front flips and here's why. I don't have as much down as I do up, do I? Yeah, and that's, that'll give you a single, probably give you a single right side up too if that was all the up you had, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's more. And when it was like that, I don't think I was doing double back flips. Doing that, I was doing double back flips. So there's there's just, a, there's this key point here. There, you, there you're not, whoop, there you're not doing it and there you are, you know, I mean, it's just a small small little bit to make the difference. And that's what I found was when I when I changed that I've been playing with CG double backflips. Like I do double backflips, right? I've been playing with it and I got her doing it. Now on this tail, where should the pivot point be? There's no instructions on this thing. So where you got that center rod that this thing pivots about, where is it? Well let's go back to this page real quick. That's another one of the first questions, where the heck do you pivot? There's no, there's no plans for Pete's sake. So that's right here. This pivot point, this is your tail. And so one and nine sixteenths back from, from the root leading edge back, that's where the pivot point is, and that represents 25%. That's where you want your pivot point to be to make it so it doesn't flutter. You'll be able to go faster without flutter the closer you are to that 25%. So there's your pivot point when you're, when you're making your tail. So my, my pivot point here is right there. One and nine sixteenths forward would have been where this would have come out to. Just to take care of that. You'll also see a picture of this because it didn't come with anything to make it a full flying stabilizer. So there's this piece right here. And it's one and a quarter inches wide. Let's see if I can point that out to you more. This piece right here. One and a quarter inches wide. Why is it one and a quarter inches wide? Uh, number one, there's a brass tube in here. Oops, I've got to keep track of my camera. There's a brass tube in here. And the longer that it is, the stronger your tail will be. Right? Nice wide tube. This tail won't rock this way as much. So, and you can take that down to about an inch. But anything narrower than, narrower than that, I've found that the tails just don't have the support that way. I'm going to flip this thing over. Let's come around the other side. Still on the tail, gentlemen. Oh, and while I'm here, there's my elevator servo. And what I got, I got just using the big arm that came with that and being hooked up on the tail like I'll show you in a minute. But uh, I didn't have to put a long arm on it. 
I think if I did put a long arm on it and did a couple changes, I'd get the down that I also need to do a double front flip. It's just not important to me. The single's fine backwards as long as I can do a nice crisp double back flip. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. But I might change it. All right, roll this puppy over. Digital servos, I put them out in the wings. And while I'm here, I'm just going to mention that's 164th inch plywood for this to mount to, and I, I put it on both sides. And the Monaco covered right over it without, it, that's the way to do it, 164th. And it's this big, so that it offers some strength to it also. Okay, back to the tail here. This is hard, my transmitter's got to be a long ways away. I've noticed I used a ball, and I was talking about how the, the width of this was one and a quarter inch wide. Uh, let's see if I can get this in here. You can see the, the ball is a nice distance away from the fuselage. Now the horn's quite a ways out if I was using a clevis, but because I'm using a ball, I'm getting it, I'm being able to push it closer to the fuselage. So that was a good measurement, and I could, probably could. Mine is at one and a quarter. If you took yours to one inch, whew, that ball would be awful close to the fuselage, but it might, be, it might still be doable. I've got a quarter inch gap there or so. Anyway, there's that portion. Now, the, the reason I cut this out is because this winds up tra traveling through here. Watch. See, if that wasn't cut out, let me get you a different lineup shot here. You wouldn't make the turn. This is hard to do. Holy crap, how am I going to show you this? There you go. That gives you the idea. The push rod has to pass through the elevator, right? So you've got to notch the elevator out so it can pass through. Okay, now my horn is mounted so that this line where we, where we attach the ball to or your clevis, the holes are, would be directly over the pivot point. And I'm thinking I can get more down if I move this horn back just a little bit from that. might get me a little more down. Uh, maybe a little less up. I'm not sure. Uh, my, my other answer to trying to get mine to do double fat, uh, front flips also would be, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but to take this and move it out another hole. I'm, on the, I'm not on the nearest hole. I'm one out. And I'm thinking I should go one more out, but put a longer arm on this to more than make up for this being out a hole. And that being on the outside of a circle, I think it would pull a little bit more before it, it died out. You'll see what happens when I get to the down. Even if I could pull it harder, it's not, it's just, it's not turning it anymore. It's not moving the elevator. It's just pulling a, a straight on pull. But there's no more. Even if I pulled it more, the elevator's not going to move anymore. It's jammed. So that's why I'm thinking move this back a little bit and also come up one hole here a little bit and get, and then again, get by a long arm, get all the throw you, you could possibly need to make up for what you lost. But I think geometrically, I think that makes good things happen as far as getting more up and more down, particularly the more down. Okay, notice I've got some tail weight on here. That's all relative. Is that all you need for the tail? Well, you'll see. I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to put this up to the light. I'm sorry about that. Here we go. And you can see, I mean, light, blind the light. Now the pictures plus this will make you understand, oh yeah, I see what he did and why he did it. Those are maybe a little bit heavy, but you know what, I'm adding tail weight anyway. And that adds rigidity to the tail by putting the wires in like that. Make sure your bins are flat, because... And also remember the tube has to be in the middle when you're doing these bins, because that's one piece and you can't slide the tube on after you do all those bins. That's one piece wire. Wasn't that hard. And the hard part was keeping those bins flat to the table. Because what you're putting it in is real thin. The tail's real thin. You'll understand when you get there. Bend flat. All right, cool. We got through what was needed for 99% of you can just turn me off right now. And uh, that's probably all you needed. Now I'm going to get into some of, some of the more details of stuff. I guess I'm just going to start right off with opening this thing up. This holds my antenna out. My other antenna comes out here. They're 90 degrees from each other like you're supposed to be. Doesn't matter. This thing, you don't, you don't fly it that far away. But if I ever caught a thermal or something like that, well, I got my antennas are set right. And I use this 
actually kind of came in handy. I can pop the door open so I can get my fingers to it. There's the inside that you saw all the routing for in the pictures. Of course the battery's up front. And all the routing came into came in through that hole basically I route everything in. That servo is a oh I gotta read it, I'm sorry. It is a S3152. The other servo, you've got a picture of exactly what it is. Close that back down. All right, control throws, my normal control. Let's just go through some control throws real quick. Yeah, I know this tape's going to be too long. All right, this is on low rates ailerons. This is low rate, whoops. This is low rate elevator. I guess I should give you the side view. These are standard rates that are, are super aerobatic. I have my control set up linearly. I can do anything. I can do, this will stall. This you can do a snap stall, you know, so that's, that's a lot of elevator and it's, it's nice and crisp. So that's what I've got. And I'm actually going to turn that up a little bit. I felt that was soft a couple times when I'm upside down in a loop and needing a little more up because I'm because I'm downwind at the top of the loop you know I'd like it to kick around a little bit better so I thought that was good the rudder notice I put an arrow balancer on there there's a to make this stiff because this this piece was cut off of this and then glued to this right so I put a toothpick in here one of those round toothpicks and and just just to make that rigid but that worked out pretty well it's got so much power I think without it would be just fine too. It doesn't need the extra power that gives. But I'll probably do it again. Notice I put some tri stock in here to, to really mount the, the rudder on good and strong. In case I should ever land it on its top, maybe it won't break. Control throws for rudder. I'm sorry I'm getting off here. Here we go. That's that's low rates and that's just plenty. Absolutely plenty. You know, the high rates being there, it is fun. That's almost in line with the. Could get more if I wanted it. Don't need it. It's crazy. Okay, what else I did, and, and what you might be interested in, is if I do that, on my throttle, that's flaps, that's spoilers, so to speak. Flapperons and spoilerons. Of course, that was. So I got flaps. If I drop this down, I've got flaps, there's neutral, there's flaps. At the same time as that, I still have either ones with the flaps. But it's been interesting because when you're upside down, you can just put yourself some forward stick and that gives you reverse camber. For when you're inverted, when you're right side up, you can add some camber to your airfoil. What I'm doing is I'm changing this thing right now. This is That's how I've had it set up and I'm going to change it so it straight couples. So when I grab elevator, then the flaps come down a little bit at the same time, right Right with this one stick, couple it. I just wanted to experiment with this. There was some cool things you could do with it. It, it was worthwhile. What I found was that I'm going to have my, my three toggle switch, hopefully, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but so when I throw it, I've got partial flaps because I found with just that much flap, like a, like a trailing edge one quarter inch lower, that gave this thing some incredible lift and, and real light wind days and you could go up and you just couldn't believe it could go up in that light winds. That's that's what this airfoil likes to be cambered to give you extra lift without creating a whole lot of drag. Then you just shut that off. So I guess what I'm saying there is if, if you needed to have your some flaps or flapperons on a toggle switch there's step one and there's step two for landing. That just kind of helps the wing create lift. And that starts creating drag at that point, big time at that point. All right, let me turn that off. What changes I made? Okay, first off, well, let me turn my radio off. First off, they gave me a composite spar that's supposed to fit in here, and I didn't put it in there. 
I took that composite spar and I put it in my wing. So, and then I also, but I also, you'll see I did route a spar in there. You can tell in the pictures it's an aluminum, real light aluminum tube that I put in its place. But I took the carbon spar or whatever it was, it was a composite spar of sorts, and I put it in my wing. It probably goes out to here, and then of course straight across through the middle and out to here. And the reason I did that was because I saw a video called La Carnage and he kind of nosed it in and I didn't think it should have broke but because the spar that comes with this is a super flat carbon fiber spar it offers no strength when you hit on your nose and, and the wings try to come forward so his ripped right here ripped it and just it was and it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have ripped so I took that carbon spar and put it in here and that helps beef that up I just saw that video and I thought there's the fix for it and the aluminum tubes I put in there are super light, so they didn't they didn't carry much weight in there. Also, what's different from mine than most is I didn't shorten my wings. My wings are everybody says you're supposed to cut three inches off of each panel. I didn't do it, so I'm six inches too long compared to what most of you guys are. I don't know if some, maybe somebody else has, has done that, but I left it full length. Gave up a little ailerons for it, yeah, maybe, maybe the, the, as far as the roll rate goes. But it's still nice. I can do eight-point rolls. It's it's crisp, so that's I just wanted the the extra wing area. What else else to talk about here? Uh, you saw that you saw that this was 164th ply. You'll see in the pictures how I did it on the tail, both of them. Uh, I made those things extra big for a reason. It's on it's mounted onto foam. This one comes clear back to here, big old plate almost. And of course on the elevator, look. I made it I made it full size almost and again both sides for putting your control horns on. Alright, just a detail. See how I trim this? That's in case I cartwheel it, it helps protect the aileron. You'll see some videos. If you watch the videos, if they haven't cut this and they've left it full long, it's got a fold or a crease right about there or something like that. So I, I kind of went, okay, let's, let's say this is the ground as it comes in. I'm going to hit. It's going to hit there. Boom. I'm going to hit there again, which is why I kind of left my aileron even in a little bit from that point. So the ground's going to hit. Boom. Boom. I still have some spring and then it's going to roll off and miss my aileron. That's the idea why I did that. Either miss it now or have it bent later. I'll take it off. I don't think there's much more to say. I think with all the pictures. You've got the idea. Mine weighs about 690 grams, which is maybe a little heavy for the light version. I also want to mention this light version is not very crashable. Uh, you saw the video that I offered you there. It was the carnage. Yeah, it's it's not crashable. The, this light version. Maybe the heavy version is a crashable version. This one's not. These wings are delicate. They're built super super light. Guys, I think that about covers it. <laughs>